Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be sharing with y'all all of the books that I read in February. So yes, I know this video is a little late. Sorry about that. Um, I had the flu and uh, was thrown up often so I did not want to film any of that with y'all. I still have a little bit of the sniffles and a little bit of a cough so beware for the rest of this video. This video is gonna be long. I hope it's not too long so I'm just gonna hurry up and talk about these books but in total I read 16 books. I DNF'd two books. I listened to 10 audiobooks all of which were mo most of them were from the same author and then I read three ebooks and three physical books. I'm gonna talk about these books quickly because there are a lot of books to talk about today, so let's get started. <laughs> so again, I'm going to go from my least favorite to my favorite, so I'm gonna start out with the books I DNF'd this month. First off, I DNF'd an audiobook called Trying to Score by Tony Aleo. This is a second chance romance involving hockey. That's all I know about it. I DNF'd it. <laughs> A couple minutes into the audiobook. I was at work and I had downloaded this one to listen to while I was working and um, had to stop. Stop immediately like a couple minutes because the narrator was horrible. Like so bad it made me want to cringe. Not great at all. The dialogue between the two characters at the beginning is so horrible. It's not like a real conversation between two people. It was so cringy and so bad. So yeah I didn't finish this. At all, I stopped within a couple minutes. The second book I DNF'd is Small Town Hero by Kim Covey. This is a romance about a woman saving herself for marriage, which appealed to me like so greatly because that's what I plan to do. And I had never read a book about a woman saving herself for marriage, so I was really excited about it. I DNF'd it. <laughs> this has very unrealistic dialogue. Again, I hate when that happens in a book. Like two characters are talking, and I'm like, this isn't how human beings talk you're way too formal with each other if you understand what i'm saying and another problem major problem that i was just like i'm done reading this after only like maybe like 15 percent of the way through this book was the guy main character like finds this girl on the side of the road basically at a rest stop because her car doesn't work and she has nowhere to live because she's just passing through town and she's waiting on her car to be fixed so he like invites her over to stay at his house and then the next morning like leaves for work and leaves a stranger in his house. That's not gonna happen in real life at all. I never let a stranger just stay in my house. So after that scene happened, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> okay, now onto the books I actually did finish. <laughs> and coming in at a whopping one star, we have Free Fall by Tess Oliver. I was very, very, very intrigued by this book because it's about a guy named Nix. And once he graduates high school, he decides to open up his own tattoo shop and he calls the tattoo shop Freefall. Randomly like at the beginning he talks about how he has this picture of a woman in his wallet. Like he found this ad on like the side of the road or something with like a beautiful woman on it and like thought she was like his dream woman just by looking at her and decided to keep her picture in his wallet even though he's never met her and doesn't know who this person is. And then lo and behold in this story the random girl walks into his tattoo shop. I forget her name. Um her name is Scotland. She doesn't speak. She's mute. She's been mute ever since an accident that killed her entire family except her. She has a giant scar on her side and her boyfriend, who is very arrogant, abrasive, very self-centered, decides to bring Scotland into this tattoo shop to get a tattoo covering the scar that he doesn't like to look at. This man basically saved her from poverty and living on the streets. She said she feels guilty if she ever left him because he basically saved her life. And so it's a relationship between Scotland and Nix, the tattoo guy, and like him finding the girl who it was a picture he kept in his wallet for like years, which I just think didn't really need to happen in this book at all. Like why, why did that have to be a part of this book? I have no idea. Yeah, I read this as an ebook. The dialogue was so bad. I was really excited because I never read a book and I really wanted to expand my horizons involving characters with disabilities and I'd never read a book about a mute person before. I've now since read another book, but that's in a March 
wrap up. I was really excited, but the dialogue just with Nyx was just, cause she didn't talk. And so it was just basically Nyx and her like, like nodding her head or writing stuff down in a journal. A lot of the book was centered around side characters I didn't care about like at all. Like I don't understand why we had like a random side story about this guy being in a fighting ring. I don't understand. I think one of the main reasons though is because there's like books later on in the series involving the side characters, but I didn't care about them in this book. Like this book wasn't about them. I also found an issue with consent and basically with the boyfriend and like, I just, I hated him and like, I hated her reasons for staying with him. It was just a bad book overall. Don't recommend it, gave it a one star. Okay, so I read a lot of Megan March books in February, like a lot. I didn't read any of them. I listened to all of them. <laughs> and Megan March is the author I talked about often in my January wrap up. I listened to, I believe a whole trilogy by her and another book. I listened to seven books by her in February. It was a lot. That's mainly because her books were like available to download right then and there on the Libby app, which is the audiobook service that I use. They're like right there to listen to because there's no waiting list for it. And it was just a romance series. A bunch of these books sounded intriguing. A lot of them were mediocre in my opinion. So first I'm gonna talk about Beneath This Ink. This is the second book to the Beneath series. I talked about the first book in my January wrap up. This one is a second chance romance set in New Orleans. They are talked about briefly in the first book. It's kind of like a companion series. I found it oh, too like alpha male in my taste. Khan, our male main character, just like his words made me cringe often and he liked to nickname her babe. I personally hate that nickname as like a term of endearment. Like I, I can't stand like calling someone babe. Like I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> and he did that often. So I was grimacing often. <laughs> and the other main issue that I had is that Vanessa, our main character woman, has this issue with food. I don't know if it's like an eating disorder I've never heard of or I don't know the name of it. Basically, she was overweight as a kid. Like her mother griped on her for being so overweight. Since her mom died, she had a growth spurt and she's basically skinny now but she has an issue with food still. Like she can't really eat in front of people. And like that was touched on at the beginning and I was kind of really excited to learn more about that. It's mentioned like once at the beginning and she like has like one conversation with Khan about it at the beginning and then you don't hear about it for the rest of the book. Megan March never really addresses it ever later on in the book after like the first like 10%. She doesn't talk about her eating problem at all, which I think it would have added to the story if she would have talked about it more. So I gave this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars and I thought the narrators were okay. Okay, the next book I'm going to talk about actually should have been Flipped Places with Beneath This Ink because it's a 2 stars instead of a 2.5 but I accidentally skipped it on my list. <laughs> this is called Dirty Billionaire by Megan March. Um, This is I believe a trilogy. This is a romance about a woman like walking out on a one night stand and like the man like being really upset. He's like a billionaire and he like tries to find her and like gets on the news to try to find her. It's stupid. <laughs> this was literally only steamy scenes. Like only steamy scenes. Like that was it. I thought that Megan March had a little bit more substance to her books because like she has the steamy scenes in her books but like I was expecting more than just steam. So yeah I listened to this on audio and I gave it a two out of five stars. Okay the next three books I'm going to talk about are also Megan March books. I'm going to quickly talk about Megan March books just zoom past them. This is a trilogy. This is set after the Ruthless King series that I talked about in January. This is all centered around Temperance, who was a side character in that trilogy. She now has her own trilogy with a man who is a hitman and her falling in love with a hitman. First book is called Savage Prince. I gave it a three stars. Second book, Iron Princess. Gave that also three stars. The third and final book is Rogue Royalty, which I also gave a three out of five stars. I thought they were okay. Thought the other series was better. Okay, we're coming up to the last Megan March books. Next is a duology. I also listened to the first book is called Real Good Man by Megan March. This is a romance book that has our two main characters have a relationship over texting. She lives in New York City. He's like a country guy who lives in... Kentucky, they like get their phone numbers, I think from a different Megan March series. Like every Megan March book is like intertwined somehow. 
like there's always a side character from this book or that book and I think I'm reading them or listening to them in the wrong order but they're not available to listen to in the order that she like recommends you read them so like I'm just jumping around and I don't really care it was an okay romance book I gave it a three stars I just thought it was okay <laughs> and then the next book book number 10 that I read in February is Real Good Love by Megan March which is the second book in the duology and I gave this one a 3.5 out of five stars so a little bit better than the first one this was the best one the best series that i read by her in february do with that what you will okay we're done with megan march thank god <laughs> too many megan march books the next book that i read is the vixen and the vet by katie regnery regnery i'm so sorry i'm butchering that this is a modern retelling of beauty and the beast Belle is basically her name's not Belle. i think it's Savannah. She is a writer for a newspaper, but she gets fired from her very high up there New York City newspaper and has to move back home. I forget where, but it's very country-esque, Southern Belle-esque. She gets like a job opportunity for another newspaper, but like it has to involve a vet basically. And the only vet that she can think of that would be a really great story is basically their town hermit. He came home from Afghanistan and he was majorly injured and he's never really been out in public sense so no one really knows what he looks like so it's her trying to become close with him and do a story about him i will say there's a trigger warning for sexual assault in this book i thought it was an okay book not the best beauty and the beast romance book that i've ever read I found unrealistic dialogue didn't think the steamy scenes were all that well written but like my main like nitpicky thing is that this girl savannah states over and over again oh his name's asher that's the guy's name, the vet's name. She like talks about over and over again how like, I shouldn't be with Asher and one of the main reasons why is because he's only like four years older than her, five years older than her. She's like in her late 20s and he's in his early 30s, which like, I don't understand why that's a problem. You're both adults, so why do you have to keep bringing up the fact that he's only a couple years older than you? There are so many people out there in the world who are married to a significant other who are a couple years older or younger than them. That just really bugged me because she brought that up like often, which I don't, I don't understand why that's such a big deal. Anyways, I gave this a three out of five stars. If this was also, I believe, a free ebook at the time, I don't know if it still is anymore. Okay, next I listened to The Highlander's Promise by Lindsay Sands. This is a historical romance book set in Scotland and it's about this guy who finds this girl in the middle of the ocean like shipwrecked and like she wakes up basically tells him hey like you gotta help me like this this person's trying to kill me and before she can tell him anything else she passes out again and he like nurses her back to health with the help of his brothers and she wakes up and she doesn't remember anything about her at all and like she wakes up and she finds this man who found her next to her and thinks that since this man is in her room and is like holding her hand and like taking care of her that this must be her husband and the guy never corrects her because he doesn't want to i don't know increase her trauma she, he wants her to cope without realizing that she's actually in a house full of strangers it's really weird i thought it was a good historical romance book main problem that i had was that it has the plot of every single lindsay sands book ever which is the woman is the target for murder and like she's being hunted for some reason. I saw the plot twist or like the murderer coming, so <laughs> I just found it a little bit predictable and boring sometimes. And so I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And I listened to this one on Libby. I thought the narrator did a good job. Okay, we're finally getting into the physical books that I read. Next up is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This was a buddy read with my friend Matt from This Is Me. I will link his channel down below, as well as his review that he did for this book. He did a review for it on his channel, so go ahead and check that out if you want to learn more about it and learn about his thoughts, because we kind of have similar thoughts. A problem that I had that that Matt had too was that this was very fast paced like it would zoom over weeks and weeks and weeks of being in this palace or whatever and I don't know what happened in those weeks first of all if you didn't know about this book it's about a girl named Alina I think that's how you pronounce her name in this world fantasy land there is people called the Grisha and they're like magical beings they have powers every single person is tested when they're a kid to see if they're a grisha and like then sent to a place to learn how to like take over their craft and like learn their craft one day alina and her friend mal who she grew up with they're like in the armed forces for this country that they're in at war for 
this is very confusing. I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember what this book is about. <laughs> she ends up like showing that she has powers in her late teens. And so she gets like whisked off to like the Grisha camp or like the palace where they learn how to be a Grisha. It's weird. And like they have the Darkling there who's like this big powerful Grisha, the powerfulest Grisha. And like he looks like taking her under his wing. I thought it was boring. I thought it was very, very tropey. A main problem that I had was that Alina was like in love with her best friend Mal. Like she talks about it often at the beginning of the book. I don't understand why you're in love with Mal, like at all. We're not told why at all. <laughs> like she just says that she is. Give me the reasons, honey. <laughs> I will say I was surprised with like the little plot twist towards the end. I wasn't expecting it. So that's why I rated it a 3.75 stars instead of a three. It surprised me a little bit. So that's the only major plus I have. I don't know if I'm gonna continue with the series. I think I might, I don't own the rest of the series. So we'll see when I get to that. Next is another audiobook, and that is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. This is set in Austin, Texas, which is really cool because I live in Texas and I don't really read about books set in Texas. This girl named Penny, is going into a freshman year of college at UT, the University of Texas. If you don't live in Texas, I know what that is. <laughs> She's going to UT and she ends up like meeting this guy named Sam who works in a coffee shop and they end up like awkwardly exchanging phone numbers and they end up being like each other's emergency contact and it's them kind of like falling for each other over text messages which I thought was really interesting and cool because I never read anything like that before besides the romance book that I read earlier but like they already had like a developed relationship when the book started like they'd already been texting for a while when that book started this one you get like the whole start to finish of their relationship that meeting and everything like that and I actually really enjoyed this I really loved the narrators I thought they did a great job for the audiobook I have heard people have issues with like it took them a while to actually like start up their texting conversation which I liked the development like you don't get thrown into it at first like you get to learn about these characters for a little bit and I actually really enjoyed that so I gave this book a four out of five stars next we have an ebook it is called a Nordic King by Karina Hall or Hale I don't I can't read my handwriting right now sorry it's on the screen <laughs> this is a book that was recommended to me from Ashley from Ash Heart Books and I I believe someone else in the comments section recommend this book to me I forget who it was I'm so so sorry but I have been recommended this book before because last month I read some royalty romance books that I really loved and I was looking for more recommendations and this was on the top of a bunch of people's lists and this is basically centered around the king of Denmark I know that Denmark doesn't have a king but this is like a fictional story <laughs> basically it's about the king of Denmark and he hires a nanny for his kids he's widowed so he really needs the help and he hires a nanny for his kids and end up falling for each other. I really enjoyed this book. Um, it wasn't a full five stars for me. I don't really know why. It just wasn't. I didn't get the, the, that feeling you get with a five star book. So I gave it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this though. And if you're looking for a good royalty romance book, totally recommend this book. I believe this is the third in a companion series. So I really want to go back and read the earlier books so i'm excited to read those soon next i listened to furthermore by tahara mafi yes i have the physical book i listened to it because it was free on my libby app and i really needed to listen to an audiobook and i wanted a refresher from all those megan march books so i decided to download a middle grade and i really really enjoyed this book this is set in a fantasy land and everyone there is like full of color and everything's colorful the land is colorful everything is full of color except our main character Alice who is on the front cover here and she is the only being creature anything that lives without color it's about her and this guy named Oliver right there and Oliver has this task that he needs to complete and he needs Alice to help him complete this task. Like he specifically needs her. They're going on like a little quest to a different land and it's just so fun and magical. I really loved this book. I absolutely loved the writing. It was so whimsical, it was beautiful. The writing was amazing and it was so funny. Like so funny. The narrator did a great job and like I was laughing out loud often with this book. I loved it a lot. I think that I didn't give it a full five stars. It's just because I don't know I didn't get that feeling with the five star book if you understand what I mean. I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars. It reminded me of Alice in Wonderland and I like loved that because I love Alice in Wonderland so so much. So 
really enjoyed this one. Next we have another children's book. This one's a picture book. We have The English Roses by Madonna. I read this to y'all in a video. I will link it down below but this is just a children's book that I read quite often as a kid and I love this one. My favorite children's books of all time. Basically about these four girls right there. This new girl over here comes to their school and they're kind of really jealous of her because she's so beautiful and she gets all this attention but then they realize that she doesn't have the perfect life that they think that she does. It's all about girls learning to include others and learning to get to know girls before you judge them. I really loved it and I think this is a book that every kid should grow up reading. I gave this of course a five out of five stars. Okay we're at the last book number 18. My only five star read that wasn't the picture book right there and that is the Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I've been recommended this book constantly because I'm a romance lover and this is one of the best romance books out there right now. I loved it a lot. Basically, do you know what this book is about? We have our main characters, Lucy and Josh, and they work in this big company and they are both the assistants to the co-CEOs. And they are butting heads all the time. They basically hate each other. They play games with each other like staring contests, everything like that, basically to taunt each other and to show the other one up all the time. But then this new position opens at this company that is like right below the CEO and they're trying, they're both trying to get this position and through their competition to get this position, they may realize that they might not hate each other at all. <laughs> and I loved it so much. I love angsty romance books so much. So this was perfect. <laughs> Steamy tension between them. It was so good. Um, you can see all the tabbies in this book. If y'all didn't know, I tab a scene for every kissing romance part because I'm total romance trash. And so I've been doing that for years. So there are a lot of tabbies in this book. But I absolutely love Josh and Lucy so much. I will say, I think I need to reread this though because I was reading like three romance books at once. I was reading, I believe, an e-book romance book. I was listening to a romance book and I was reading this one. So like I found myself trying to, having to reread a bunch of scenes to be like, did this happen in that book or this book? Like for example, for like a while there, I thought that they had like done the deed, if you know what I mean. Like halfway through, I was like, oh yeah, they've they've done it. And then I read back my previous tabbies and I'm like, they've only kissed. Like, I'm remembering stuff that's not even in this book because I'm trying because I'm remembering the audiobook that I'm listening to like it was pretty bad I had to reread a lot it took me a while to get through this book so I really want to reread it and like only read this book at the moment to get the full enjoyment because I think I forgot a lot because I was reading two other books at the same time which I don't really recommend <laughs> but anyways I still loved it nonetheless totally recommend this book if you're into romance books this of course gets a five out of five stars for me <laughs> so anyways there you have it that is my very very long February wrap-up <laughs> um I hope you all enjoyed this video I know I read a lot of duds mediocre books this month but I've already read a couple books in March and those have been fantastic so I'm really 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 hopeful I'm going to be more picky and selective with the books I read or listen to from now on because I am sick of reading or listening to mediocre things. <laughs> Let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. I'd love to know and start up a conversation with you about them. Also let me know what your favorite book was that you read in February. I would love to know and get some recommendations. I'm always looking for some new romance recommendations so be sure to drop those in the comments down below. Also if you liked this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to see more content from me. Anyways that's it for today so thank you all so much for watching and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye!